Welcome back to Cooking at Home with CBC Catering. And how are you guys today? Today we're going to be doing something to celebrate the 25th of April. And so we're going to make Anzac cookies. So, you know what? This recipe that we're using today is not far from the actual original recipe. There's only one ingredient here that didn't exist in the original recipe. So what do we have? We have plain flour. We have rolled oats. We have desiccated coconut this time, but we need desiccated. We have butter, golden syrup, and bicarb. Now, are you able to tell me which one of these ingredients was not in the original? If you picked uh, this one, you are 100% correct. Coconut is the only ingredient that wasn't in the original Anzac biscuit. Now, Anzac biscuits are really nice. Like, everybody likes them differently, whether they like them crunchy or chewy, and that just comes to the cooking time. So we're gonna make them chewy today, I reckon. Uh, they're a really easy biscuit to make, and they're great. So let's rock and roll. Alrighty, first things. So we're gonna get our flour into here, sift that. So that's there. And then we're gonna add our dry ingredients to this. So we've got our oats, our coconut, then something special. So we'll just put that aside for a moment because then in here, we're gonna melt our butter and golden syrup. Now, you'll see here that I've got two pieces of utensil. I've got my spatula and my wooden spoon. The wooden spoon I'm going to use to stir the biscuits with because they're quite dense and hard and so the spatula's just not gonna cut it. But for the, um, because this is a silicon based spatula, I can use it for the melting. So there we go there. And then golden syrup, I believe. Look, you're only supposed to put one tablespoon of golden syrup, but you can always put a little bit more, I reckon. Use your spatula to scrape out all that syrup as well. Okay. Move over to this side. So I melt it over a low heat, guys, because what you don't want to do is you don't want to have the butter burning and you certainly don't want to have it boiling. Okay, so once you've got it on the heat, lower it if you find that it's just too hot or if it's boiling. So all you want to do is melt it. So I'm just going to leave that for a second. What I'm going to do over here is just get these ingredients stirred and then we've got a little bit of a chemical reaction here that I love doing in class and we all love watching it. So you, you know the old bicarb soda trick with the volcanoes? Well, remember how we only used plain flour in there? There's gonna be a bit of a reaction. The butter hasn't completely melted yet, but I'm just gonna leave that for a sec. What we're gonna do over here is use some hot water and make sure it's either, it's gotta be boiling or really hot. Okay, we have about a tablespoon of hot water and we're gonna put some bicarb soda in that. Half a teaspoon. Back over here, we turn the heat back on. Let's just get that butter completely melted. And then when this butter and golden syrup mixture is still warm, we're gonna add the bicarb soda into this and you'll see what's gonna happen. Who said there's no magic in the world? Okay, so turn that heat off. Pour your bicarbonate water in. And look what happens. We have our very own butter and golden syrup volcano of, oh, joy and froth. So if you just stir that ever so slightly, it will continue to rise. This rising is what's going to make the plain flour rise and also give it a lightness to the biscuit. Look at that. Oh, that's so cool. So that's now just all foam. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we've made a little well in the middle of our Anzac biscuits. We're going to use a wooden spoon, remember, because it's a lot easier to stir. This has just re has reacted perfectly that there is absolutely no liquid whatsoever. It is just all foam now. We're gonna pour that into the middle. Now I'm gonna keep my spatula still because if I just put my saucepan away like that, I still have quite a bit left in there. Now this is the only liquid 
that this biscuit has. There's no other milk, there's no eggs or anything like that. So you want to make sure that you get every single bit. And if you use your spatula properly, like a scraper, you can get quite a bit. And that's how your saucepan should be going back. Okay, now with your wooden spoon, Okay, this one here, maybe we might, I might have put too much butter or um, you know that little bit of extra golden syrup that I put in there? There, that's not a balance of ingredients. So, this one here I think that it's too sticky and so it tells me that I've either put too much butter or too much golden syrup in or I didn't put enough flour in. So, but I'm not gonna put a lot in at a time so we'll go slowly till we get the right consistency. So I've got a tablespoon full at a time. I've got my sieve here. And then we'll stir this up and see how we go. The last thing you want is for them to be dry. So they just need to be able to come together, but not be that sticky or that wet like you saw. Because then what will happen is when you cook them, they're just gonna go completely flat out. All right guys, so now we've got that right consistency. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is evenly, we're gonna portion out the biscuits. Now. Look, I know this is, sounds like the hardest thing to do, but there's an easy way, and that's called a tablespoon. Now, what you got, this little clever thing does for you is maintains the portions. So if we just do one tablespoon at a time, we know that they're all the same size. Okay, now what you need to do with this is make sure you roll it into a tight ball. Now just do that for now, and then I'll show you something else we're gonna do after. And just put it on your tray. And another good way to tell whether your Anzac biscuits are going to be good or not well, I'm a bit too scared to tell you this one, but I will anyway, is try a bit of the mixture. The reason why I'm too scared to tell you is because if the mixture is good, you might end up eating half of it before you actually bake it. So you can see that the tablespoon is helping me with portioning, so we don't have one biscuit that's really big and one biscuit that's really small. And the other thing that I'm doing that is evenly spacing them on the tray. Now I know I might not ha end up having nine and I can shift them over, but spacing them evenly on your tray is really important for baking. Now, how quick is that? You know, when you really think about it, how long will it have taken you to have walked down to the shop to buy a packet of biscuits or an ice cream or something? And look, we have just made nine, 10, 11 or 12 Anzac biscuits. Doesn't take long. If you've got a sticky mixture, just dip the back of your fork in some flour and we're going to squash them. Not too hard. But so now they no longer look like a meatball, they look like a cookie. Our oven has been preheating at 200. Okay, and these are ready to hit the oven and we'll probably leave them in there for about 15 minutes. 15 minutes and then we'll check them. Uh, don't just check the top. The thing is when you're pulling out an Anzac biscuit, when you take this out, it's going to be really, really soft. So you, if you pick it up, it's going to break, um, but just be really careful. And that's how we can tell whether they're cooked or not by looking up the underneath. But generally about 15 minutes is plenty, especially if you like a nice chewy biscuit. So guys, I'll see you in 15 minutes. Okay, gentlemen, I think our Anzac biscuits are ready to go and that was like 15 minutes. I thought what we'd do this afternoon is set it up as like, as if you're going to give someone at home and give them a little treat and give them a cup of tea with some Anzac biscuits. So, like seriously, gentlemen, you wanna be the fave in the family? Offer something like this. You'll be so appreciated because I tell you what I'm appreciating right now is the smell that's coming from these Anzac biscuits. Have a go at them, send us a video or send us a photo of what you've done. I'd love to see them. Um, good luck and we'll see you soon. Ciao.